Good morning, everyone. And I've got to say these two beautiful words that I love so much. Happy Sabbath. I could not always say those words, but I say it now with so much passion, so much excitement. Because, yes, it's good. And I'll tell you, I finally got it right. I finally got it right. For 56 years, my mind was blinded to the truth. The devil kept me blinded to this wonderful message, this truth. But now the word's out. The word's out. I know the truth, and he done messed up. But I'm telling everybody, amen. My goal is everybody that I see, I'm going to tell them about this wonderful truth that I have now. Praise his name. I, I was born um, in a, to a Christian mom and dad. When, when I was born, my parents were believers. And uh, I was born on a Sunday uh, morning. And they tell me that on Wednesday evening that they had me in church, Wednesday evening. Now, I don't remember that, of course. I was only four days old, but they tell me that. But I do remember growing up in church that I can count on one hand how many times I've ever missed going to church growing up in my life. So I grew up with a family that loved the Lord. They were not Sabbath keepers. We were Baptist. And, but that's all that I knew growing up. But we went to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday evening, Wednesday night. I grew up in church. They dedicated me to the Lord. And I knew at an early age that God had his hand on my life. When I was nine years old, I repented. I received the message. I repented. I was baptized, and I received him as my Lord. And I knew at nine years old that God had called me to be a pastor. I didn't know the word pastor at that time was the associated word, but as I look back, I know that I was to be a pastor at nine years old because the hand of God was on my heart. And I grew up knowing that. And so I have a wonderful heritage of Christian background. I just didn't have this truth about the Sabbath. I just didn't have it. And so when I was 20 years old, I, I answered that call and I went to college and Bible college and then I finally made it through seminary and so forth and got a degree and all of that and started pastoring a church. And I've been pastoring now for 35 years. But I pastored a Sunday church or Sunday churches for 35 years and I preached the truth of what I knew to be the truth all of that time. And we decided that uh, God was leading us to begin a Christian school. And so we started a Christian school in Huntsville 14 years ago. And the beautiful thing is because Huntsville has such an Im impact with Adventists there because of Oakwood and, and an Adventist population there is pretty heavy, heavy, several of the Adventist families have chosen to put their children in our school. Now I'm telling you that God planted them there for me because I didn't know the message. And so these children came to my school. And for all of these years, I kind of kept a watchful eye on these families and these children. And I was wondering, well, why would anybody want to waste a good Saturday going to church? <laughs> and so I kind of had that, that looking down on you type of an attitude. I'm thinking, why don't you just not go on Saturday because that's the day of football game and fishing and all of that. But why don't you just come to our church on Sunday and let's just do it right. That was kind of my attitude. But there were some of these students that had the, uh, the calling on their heart that they would come to my office and they would say, Pastor Reggie, could I talk to you for a minute? And I would say, sure, because my door was always open. And there was this one young lady a few years ago came in and she began telling me about the Sabbath message. And I was listening to her, very politely listening, but I, I didn't open my heart to it. After all, I had a, a Ph.D., you know, and, and uh, I was not going to be listening to a 10th grade girl tell me about doctrinal things. But I was polite as a pastor. So we sat there and we talked and so forth. We didn't argue. I just listened to her and all along thinking, yeah, that's right. She just, she'll learn one day. But I kept looking at the families. And you know what I discovered? That those Adventist families that God planted into our school, those Adventist families, they loved on me, they cared for me, they gently guided me, they just consistently lived and walked out their faith. And I remember one, one time we had a basketball game 
on a Friday evening. We didn't have a, 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 a charge of the schedule, and the game happened to be on a Friday evening. And so one of our very best players was an Adventist uh, student, and his dad came, and we had the Friday, it was a Friday afternoon game, and I noticed that right about uh, 30, 45 minutes before sundown, right in the middle of the game, the dad come and he took his children, and they left. Yeah. And I took notice of that. I think, why? And I know why he's doing that, because they're going to church. But the thing I'm trying to say is these families was consistent, they loved their God, they believed their message, and they walked in truth, and they did it with love. And then one day, this very man who I was telling you that took his children uh, out of the game, he came to me one day and he said, Pastor Reggie, his name is Guy Jusang, for those of you that might would know him. He said, Pastor Reggie, he said, you know, you and I, we have a great relationship, and we have, his children have been in our school five or six years, and I said, sure. He said, can I talk to you for a moment? I said, sure, come on in. And he said, you know, Pastor, he said, I've got the book that I would like for you to read. He said, now, you know, we've read the book. In my family, we believe the things that are in this book, but, you know, we might have it wrong. We, we might be deceived on something here. Now, buddy, was he, he was setting me up here, huh? <laughs> setting me up. And he said to me, he said, you know, Pastor, he said, I really appreciate you. You've got a Ph.D. in theology and all that. He said, do you mind reading this book here? And it was the Ten Commandments, twice removed. He said, would you just read the book? And at the end of the book, just uh, tell me what you think about it. And if there's anything wrong with the book, please love me enough to come and tell me so that I can get it right. And boy, he was really stroking that ego thing. Huh? And I said, well, sure, brother. I'll be glad to read that book. And all along, I'm thinking, here's my chance. I'm going to get it straight with these folks. So I took the book, and I read it. I read through this book the first time, and I've got to tell you something. It literally shocked me what I read. I mean to tell you, it shocked me. Even though I had a Ph.D., I'd never learned this before. And I said, well, you know, there's got to be uh, more to this. Maybe I just read it too quickly. And so I decided that I would read the book again. So I read every page. And there it begins sinking in, and I begin thinking, you don't think that maybe I've had it wrong all this time. And I begin learning about Constantine and all the stuff that happened there in the Catholic Church and how that we begin following after that tradition. And then I begin thinking, well, maybe I have had it wrong. Let me read it a third time. And so I read it three times. And at the end of the third time, I was so stirred in my heart, I said, I've got to let my wife read this book. And so I took it home, and I had not told her that I'd read the book. She didn't know the history that you just now know. I just handed her the book, and I said, honey, would you read this book? And just at the end of it, just tell me what you think about it. That's all I said. Just tell me what you think about it. She said, sure. And so she read the book. She read it like one night. I mean, it's only 128 pages. She just read the book, and I was there. I remember the very moment that she finished the last page because I was waiting to hear what she said. She closed the book, and she looked at me, and I said, what do you think? She said these words. I'm going to quote you verbatim. She said, Reggie, this is a no-brainer. Why aren't we doing this? And I said, honey, I don't know why we're not doing that. Let me read the book again. Yeah. I'm a slow learner. So the bottom line is I read this book five times. Five, actually, I read it more than that, but at that point it was five. I'm telling you, this is the best book I've ever read. This book right here. It's the very best book I've ever read outside the Word of God. Because this book is personal to me, because this book enlightened me to the truth. And so after I read it five times, she and I, we embraced and we said, Dear God, we are so sorry that we have never had this truth before. And for 35 years, I've been teaching people the wrong message. I did it with the right heart, the right attitude, but I had the wrong message. And you know, you can have the wrong message and have it be sweet about it, but it's still wrong. And so I determined, and we determined, that God would have us to make a, a lifestyle change. Someone mentioned that here today. It was a total lifestyle change. It wasn't just changing our day. It was changing our entire lifestyle. 
Yes. I mean, I at that point decided I'm going to give up my pork chops, my catfish, my shrimp. Yeah, I gave it all up for the Lord. Yes. Lifestyle change. So we were so excited and happy about this wonderful truth of the Sabbath that we had learned how that it's God's holy day and He told us to keep it holy. He didn't tell us to make it holy. He did that. So He just said for us to remember it and not forget it and to keep that day set aside and to give ourselves to Him that day that He would come and visit with us and He would put a blanket of His love on us and He would make it a sign to us. And so we decided, yes, Lord, we want that in our life. And so we decided we would make this lifestyle change. And she and I were so happy, but we had a church full of folks that didn't know. And we decided, well, we've got to go tell them. So the very next Sunday, the very next Sunday, it was showdown time. And they didn't know what I was about to say, and I didn't know what they was about to say. And I told them. I told them what I've just shared with you. I didn't know what they were going to do, but I let them know. I said, listen, this is just something that, that God has spoken to me about, to my wife, and we have made a determination and a commitment to God that our lifestyle is changing, our message is changing. We will honor the Lord. We will keep His Sabbath day holy, and that's the message we're going to begin preaching, and we're going to be uh, changing our worship days to Sabbath day. And if you can join us and you would like to join us, we welcome you. If you can't, we love you anyway. I didn't know what they were going to say. But praise be unto the name of the Lord, every single person in the church, every one of them, glory to His name. Yes. My, my, thank my God. Praise His name, folks. Mm. Every single person in the church came to us that night and they said to me, Pastor Reggie, we don't understand all of what you're doing and why you're doing it, but we see the passion in you, we love you, you've been our pastor, we trust you, and we will follow your leadership. And from that Sunday on, we've never met on a Sunday and we then started meeting on Sabbath. And what we do is that we usher it in. I mean to tell you, it's a celebration for us. It's a celebration. Oh, yes. And I got to tell you something. I know that you, you, you meet on Sabbath morning here. We can't wait that long. No, we can't wait that long. We have to do it at the beginning at sundown Friday night, right when it's coming in. We say, Lord, we love this day. We love the Sabbath day, Lord. It's your holy day. And it's a celebration under His greatness in our life. And so our whole church then began to grow in numbers. I thought it was going to shrink, but it grew. And it grew. And I must tell you this, and then my time is up, but you see, we started as a Christian school 14 years ago. I had pastored many years before, and we were starting a school, and I wasn't necessarily intending on attaching a church to that. I was just going to do a Christian school. But we had some families within our school that um, started coming uh, to us and, and was not churched in any church. And, and they said, hey, could, could we just do a Bible study? And so that pastor thing inside me said, sure. And so we just started a little, a little group, a little Bible study group. And I really wasn't wanting the responsibility of a church again and a school and all of that. And I jokingly said to the pastors around the town, I said, guys, you know, I'm probably the only pastor in town that prays that his church don't grow. You know, and I was joking, but you know what? And I got to tell you this I was saying that in a joking way, but I found out that that offended the Lord. And one day the Holy Spirit just sort of thumped me right here on the chest, and He said, Reggie, I don't ever want you to say that again because it's not your church. The church belongs to Jesus. And He said, And I want it to grow. And I stopped saying that, and I said, Lord, let this church grow. And when I started, uh, when my wife and I and our church started receiving Sabbath and honoring Sabbath day and started worshiping and getting it right and, and following the message the best that we know how, and we still probably don't have it all right, but our heart is we're going to do right. And you know what? As we started doing that, then that church started swelling and growing. 
in our little old sanctuary. It's not as big as it, but it's going to be. Oh, it's going to be. It's going to be. Oh, they're coming. Yeah. They're coming. It just spills up. And they just start coming in from all over the place. And you know what? The final thing I want to say to you is thank you. You know, people are hungry for the truth. And you've got the truth. This denomination has the truth. And thank God for the Adventist, how that the Lord has used the Adventist church to take me and to help me understand revelation. You've lived your life consistently. And I, even though I don't know you personally, I know how people look at you how the Christian world looks at you, how that we look down upon you. Uh, you. I don't anymore, but how I used to look down upon you. And, uh, and just thinking, you know, you just got this thing wrong and you're caught and you're crazy and all. I used to say those things. And boy, didn't God do a good thing, put me right in the middle of you here. huh? <laughs> Glory to his name. So God bless you. Thank you. And bless the name of the Lord. He's a good God. Happy Sabbath.